This is the story of Hurricane Zeta, a recap of preliminary data from a late season hurricane that struck the Gulf Coast. This was the view October 28th in the evening downtown Mobile. It was a storm that was a category two at landfall. Didn't produce a lot of lightning, but a few flashes that you probably may have seen. Those were more likely transformers. Zeta made landfall about four o'clock in the afternoon noon, just to the southeast of Houma, Louisiana. Winds 110 miles an hour, and it was a fast moving storm. The eye of it moving across New Orleans, Slidell, into southern Mississippi, and then into central Alabama. Because it was moving so fast, it remained a hurricane for a longer period than people would have expected. Now here are just some of the recorded wind speeds on the left and wind gusts on the right. The key word is recorded. There are a lot of spots where we don't get weather information. Now all of these are airports and that means the weather sensor was in a wide open area where you tend to get the highest measurements. Still, these are big numbers. Mobile Airport, Mobile Regional Airport, a steady wind, highest at 53 miles an hour, gusting to 91 miles per hour. Look at Montgomery, steady wind of 41. Now that's tropical storm force gusting to 61. It gives you a sense of how far inland those extreme winds travel. Meanwhile, in Biloxi, 65 mile an hour steady wind. So again, other locations 5, 10 miles away could have seen winds that were far greater than that. This was a steady mover, though. You could make out the eye moving through southern Mississippi through the evening and then eventually to southern Alabama. Now the bulk of the rain, the bulk of the wind actually was close to the eye. And we'll see that in just a moment. Those of us closer to the coastline into the Florida Panhandle, our conditions, they were bad, but not quite as bad as they were for many folks inland because it was moving so quickly. Look at this graph of storm surge at Pascagoula. Now places like Biloxi, storm surge was easily seven to eight feet. Pascagoula, this shows a six foot rise in water level over about a two hour period, six feet up and then a gradual decline. Now, because it was moving so fast, it limited the storm surge duration. Here's what it did to Dauphin Island. It's hard to tell, but right here, that's Bienville Boulevard. That is the main road that goes east to west across Dauphin Island. And if you look at these beach homes on the coast, wherever there was a driveway, now you see, or at least a spot to pull the car in, you see the sand pushed inland, that's known as overwash, uh, between the berms. So Bienville Boulevard covered by sand in between standing salt water from the Gulf of Mexico. Toward the west end of Dauphin Island, you can't even see Bienville Boulevard, and that was taken the day after Zeta made landfall, just one of the many impacts of a hurricane or tropical storm. It wasn't too long ago that the Gulf Coast, South Baldwin County had a direct strike from Hurricane Sally. Compare Sally to Zeta and even to Delta, which hit Louisiana as a hurricane. Delta was moving at 14 miles an hour, which is a typical forward speed for a hurricane at landfall on the Gulf Coast. Sally was devastating because it was only moving three miles an hour, three miles an hour. And then when you look at Zeta, at landfall, moving 24 miles an hour. So in other words, it was eight times faster than Sally. And that again is why the hurricane force winds went so much farther inland. And it was moving faster because of the steering winds ab above, way up above the ground. So inland counties here in Grove Hill, Alabama, trees blown down. Places like Grove Hill, that photo by Robert Pickard, and also places like Monroeville, Alabama, had not seen winds this strong since Hurricane Ivan uh, 16 years ago. So for many folks, they wondered if it was tornado damage. No, that's just straight, strong wind. That was the photo in Monroeville. Steady wind recorded in Monroeville, 64 miles an hour. No available data for the wind gusts. And you look at some of these other inland locations. Now these are not mostly not at airports, so the levels are not as high, meaning most spots could have gotten a lot higher wind than that. In Leakesville, Mississippi, gusts 68 miles per hour. Here at NBC 15 in Mobile, we had much higher wind than we had with Hurricane Sally. And then along the coast, the Fort Morgan Peninsula, 67 mile an hour steady wind gusting to 78. During Hurricane Sally, that was 98 steady gusting to 121. So strong wind, but not as strong on the coast as it was for Sally.
So here's a history of the radar. And what I have circled here, that's that band, the eye wall, where you find the highest wind right outside the eye. And look where it was. It wasn't near the coast, which is why many of us did not see the most extreme conditions. But when you get that solid area of rain falling, literally it's dragging down momentum that's 10,000 uh, 10, feet, 20,000 feet up in the air. It brings it down to the ground. And that's when you get this widespread damage, uh, as we see in Atmore, a photo by Ditto Gorm, multiple trees down and almost all of them pointing to the north because the winds were coming out of the south. Citronelle, Alabama, same story, tree down on the home. Many people have heard the expression, it sounded like a freight train. Well, it's used for tornadoes, but all wind sounds the same. It's the same sound where if you're driving down the interstate, 75 miles an hour, you open the window, you hear that roar. If you heard a roar, it wasn't necessarily, and it probably was not a tornado. It was simply just that burst of wind that was raking across your county. Now look at that. That system moved out of Louisiana, out of Mississippi, through Alabama, through Tennessee, through Virginia, off the coast, and headed toward Long Island. Within 24 hours, it traveled 1,300 miles in 24 hours before totally fading away. So needless to say, it had a wide impact. These are just some of the dozens and dozens of reports of wind damage, storm surge, isolated tornadoes, and even flooding as you got into the mountains, the Appalachians. So hurricanes and tropical storms, it's not just something that happens at the coast, it can impact a wide area. And it is important to make sure your emergency management agency knows about damage in your community so they can log it just in case you need government aid, state aid, or even federal aid. Everyone needs to know exactly what happened for the big picture and for the next time. We've had way too much happening in the Gulf of Mexico. Zeta was just one out of eight named storms that made landfall in the Gulf of Mexico this hurricane season so far. As I speak, the hurricane season is not over, and Louisiana was impacted directly by five of those storms. So a record season in the Gulf, in the Atlantic Ocean. We're into the Greek alphabet. There are more letters available. We hope that we don't have to see any more of those. So Hurricane Zeta will be remembered for being a very fast moving storm that spread high wind far inland into Alabama and also impacting North Georgia, the Carolinas as a tropical storm, as a wind storm. I'm NBC 15 Chief Meteorologist Alan Seals.